NCAA tournament preview of a 116 game here. Houston and Longwood. Riley Davis from Heat Check. CBB going to take us through this one. Riley was uh, familiar with Longwood from his work on the Almanac with the field of 68 in the offseason. The Lancers, 21 and 13 this year. Uh, I'll just pose it to you broadly as we start here. Is there anything about Longwood that makes them something you should pique your attention to, perk your eyes up a little bit, taking on Houston? The short answer is no, but that's because they're playing Houston. I think it's worth noting, like, this is a 16 seed that's almost in the top 150 on Kim Palm. They're 157 right now. Uh, their coach, Griff Aldrich, has really done a tremendous job building that program up from nothing. And the MO of Longwood is essentially they turn you over on defense, they clean up the glass on both ends of the floor, and they have a ton of just versatile guards and wings who are all sort of in between like 6'4 to 6'7, and they're all burly and, and just big dudes. Uh and while that works in the Big South to accumulate these wings that can overwhelm smaller perimeter units and to stack size in the front court, I don't really worry about Houston with their guards, with their wings, or really anybody on, on that team having issues with this defense. I think, um, you know, they're, they're a fun story. They they started out 12-1 uh, and one on the season and then kind of stumbled all the way to 2-8 and eight in Big South play before finishing 6-10. and 10, I believe they were just like the 6th or the 7th seed, if I'm not mistaken, and were able to rattle off three straight wins, including wins over the top two seeds, High Point and UNC Asheville. So they're playing well, but again, this is, uh, I don't think we're going to get another 16 over one upset, and it, he, the way Houston plays is just so conducive to sort of draining the will out of mid-major opponents. The Big South has historically struggled in the tournament, at least over the past half decade or so. Um, yeah, I just don't really think they have enough to really even hang in this game. So the interesting thing that jumps out to me about Longwood profile-wise on paper is this team's a really good rebounding team. Like, they 12th in the country in offensive rebounding percentage, so they mm -hmm. set out to do that. And right. then defensively, they've been 43rd at preventing offensive rebounds. When you think Houston, you think like physical. You, I mean, they get after it on the offensive rebounds for sure. Houston's actually not great at preventing offensive rebounds. So like it is a spot here where Longwood could exploit them, get second chance opportunities. And then the other thing offensively is Longwood draws a lot of fouls. Like they their free throw rate is 40%, 32nd in the country. Houston fouls constantly because of the mm -hmm. pressure they put on teams. So like – I do think if you're looking for like who's the plucky 16 seed that's going to hang in a game, I like Longwood profile wise for that because they do match up with some things that are the only weaknesses Houston has on paper. And then they might get some freebies at the line potentially. Like if they are making shots, there's some things that would make me believe they can hang. The problem is they're not a team that likes to shoot the ball. Like they barely even shoot threes. Only 28% of their shots come from three. So I don't know. I was looking through their game logs. Like their biggest game of the year was Dayton. And Dayton is not a team that gets after you on the offensive rebounds. But Deron Holmes is like a great big, right? And Deron Holmes only had one offensive rebound in 37 minutes that game. Dayton as a team only had four offensive rebounds total. I kind of think they might be able to at least slow down Houston physically in this game. Yeah. But maybe I'm like completely wish casting here. Am I delusional for thinking that they could hold up? Yeah, I, I mean, I see where you're coming from. I want it to happen. I mean, it's funny, even thinking back to the conversations with the about the Almanac, Griff is, I mean, always just been super friendly to me. And even when I was asking him, like, how do you get these dudes who are six, 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 seven to just dominate the glass like this? And it's, I mean, total just like, it's nothing special other than like the mindset kind of, it's a little coach speaky, but it is, it was, I mean, you could tell it was authentic. It's like, that's just what we do. We just send a bunch of guys to the glass and like, they know if they don't rebound, they're not going to play. Um, it, but yeah, I, like it's a, it's a fun team. It's a fun story. Again, their second tournament appearance in three years, but I, I like, I just can't get over looking at the last few big South champions. Um, like last season you had UNC Asheville with Drew Pember, who I would say is going to, at least have a cup of coffee in the NBA, maybe find a chance to stick around. And they got blasted by UCLA in the first round season before. 
before it was Longwood as a 14 who got blasted by Tennessee in the first round. 2021 was a Winthrop team that was the darling going up against Villanova without uh, Colin Gillespie in the first round. They lost by double digits. Like the Big South has just not fared well, even if it's been these fun teams that we thought could make a little bit of noise. So yeah. that's why even if some of their their strengths stack up uh, against Houston's strengths pretty well, like I just I'm not seeing it. It's a team where, with all due respect to your favorite team, if this 16 seed drew a one seed I didn't think was maybe the best team in the country, I'd be like, oh, that's interesting. Maybe there's something to watch here. With Houston, I just trust they're so good and so physical and solid. They're not going to beat themselves, and they would almost need to beat themselves here a little bit. Uh, Houston's injury concerns real quick. Jawan Roberts is banged up. Tugler's out. Does that matter at all for a game like this or not until later in the tournament? Hmm. Now I'm, I, I'm, I like, I'm not going to, I'm not going <laughs> to go away from like my gut with this game. And I want to say no, but like that Tugler injury is looming large, but I, I still don't think it, yeah. it matters much for this first round game. Okay. Is there any player on Longwood final question for me, any player on Longwood that is capable of having like the March moment game where he's just unconscious and there's nothing Houston can do. And all of a sudden you look up 10 minutes left. It's close because someone on Longwood is going stupid. There's not really anyone who jumps out. Maybe Michael Christmas. He was, I think he was the MVP of the Big South tournament. And he started his career at James Madison. So a little bit higher level than the Big South. And he's battled injuries throughout his year. Really been playing his best ball as of late. But yeah, they, I, I'm not, I don't really think they have a, a guard this year who is really the flamethrower type who's just going to catch fire from deep or anything. Yeah, yeah, their profile wise, just personnel doesn't seem to map with like, oh, Giddy Potts showed up. Like, right. There's nobody like that here. There is, however, a player named D.A. Houston on Longwood. And uh, I'm a big fan of your name being your opponent's name. I just feel like there's some sort of voodoo there. I don't know. I like it. Hey, uh, more incredible insights like that. This team has a player, <laughs> the name of their opponent. You can get those here on Sleepers Media, and uh, if you want to bet on this game, you can do so with us at MyBookie. MyBookie is the best place to place bets on during March Madness, the presenting sponsor of all of these previews and recaps. We got a promo code, Sleepers. You can get a first-time deposit bonus up to $1,000. Make sure you get some free bets. Uh, they got futures. They got player props. Whatever you need, whatever you're looking to bet, you can do so at MyBookie. The link is in the description of this video. The line for this game that I'm seeing is Houston Minus 19 feels normal, normal 116 there. Uh, what would you bet in this spot, Riley? I kind of think Houston, uh, again, factoring in the Big South history, it's no disrespect for the Longwood and what they do, but I think Houston wins by probably over 20. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's much of a contest. However, I will close with this, Greg. It's not just DA Houston. This team has some great names in general. <laughs> they, have, they have a they have a point wing named Jonathan Massey who literally goes by John John like that's what everybody calls him is John John uh Michael Christmas of course I just mentioned I love a good Christmas last name sure. D A Houston as you as you so eloquently shouted out then they have Jesper Grenlin from Finland love a good Jesper and finally he doesn't play much but Saxby Sunderland great name I, free my guy Saxby I just, I just want like that that name deserves to be. I don't know, like get, get him playing time for somebody. <laughs> Riley, even the names you didn't mention here are incredible. Sizemon Zapala, Waylon Napper. Like this, this is an all-timer name team. I'm with it. I used to pick Cinderella teams based on how many knee tattoos they have. So uh, this is not the dumbest reason I've ever been interested in a 16 seed. So good luck, Longwood. You may need it. I think I'm with Riley. I would take Houston to win this game by 20 plus. Uh, we will be back to recap this, especially in the event that anything crazy happens. We'll be here. Stay tuned for more during March Madness.